Welcome back to the International Business Management course. For today's lecture, we will go over the last type of environment or the last type of risk that we have to analyze and to avoid when engaging in internationalization or when entering in foreign markets, which is the commercial risk. And then we will go over the strategies and the organizational manners that ha we have to conduct when engaging as an international firm or when we are engaging in internationalization. So therefore, we will cover the commercial risk and its components. We will describe the strategies in international businesses that we have to take into consideration. We will understand how uh, to conduct or to build global firms, and we will evaluate the organizational structure uh, in international businesses. And we will also analyze the foreign market entry strategies um, which could be chosen or could, that you could choose to enter foreign markets. To start off, let's evaluate the last type of risk. Uh, let's recap. We, throughout the course, we have covered the four different types of risks which we have to evaluate. We went over the financial risk. Uh, in the last lecture, we went over the political and legal environment uh, that could arise. Uh, or that uh, the risk that could arise from the political and legal environment, which is also known as the country risk. And we uh, covered the, and today we will cover the commercial risk. So what exactly is the commercial risk? The commercial risk is the risk that could arise from dealing with people or foreign uh, uh, participants in the foreign market that you are trying to enter. So commercial risk could be categorized into the following points having a weak partner, operational problems that could arise due to the lack of experiences and the lack of knowledge related to the foreign uh, country that you are engaging or entering, the timing of entry, which, has, uh, which sometimes could be very critical and uh, when choosing the timing of entry, you have to do it in a very tactical and strategic manner, and the competitive intensity or the competition base that you are dealing with in that uh, foreign market. And of course, the poor execution of strategy. This could also uh, impact the or could enhance uh, your chance to undergo the commercial risk. Let's take each one in details. When we are talking about commercial risks, I have to take into consideration and evaluate the partners which I will be dealing with in the foreign market. Who are the partners? Starting from the distributors to the wholesalers to the retailers to even the suppliers that I could be dealing with in the foreign market, all of these are, we are supposed to deal with them or our transactions should take the form of business uh, partnership instead of just uh, dealing with them on a uh, on a transactional level I have to inquire good communication and good partnership or good relationships with these participants because they could highly impact my ability to provide my market or my customers with the appropriate product in the right time and in the right form uh, and so on. So having a, a weak partner could jeopardize your ability to um, enter a foreign market and to operate in an efficient and effective manner. Therefore, it's very important to um, study uh, and, and get familiar with uh, your partners in order to avoid doing transactions or partnering up with uh, a weak uh, participant or a weak partner. Another component that could uh, arise or from it could uh, I could jeopardize my business and fall under the commercial risk is the operational problems. Again, due to the lack of knowledge of the way or the operational manners and the technicalities in the foreign market, some businesses could fall under the operational problems where they're not able to operate properly because they are they have lack of experience and lack of knowledge in this 
this market. So therefore, again, you have to take into consideration and you have to do your research in order to avoid any operational problems, whether it is in distribution or procurement um, or warehousing. I have to evaluate and study the market very well in that foreign country in order to avoid any operational problems from occurring and also if they do occur uh, how to overcome these problems and how to manage them in an uh, efficient and effective manner in order to uh, save my business from uh, being jeopardized. Also another commercial risk is the timing of entry. If I don't choose the timing of entry to a foreign market wisely, I can definitely uh, fall under the uh, commercial risk because of this. So what's meant by the timing of entry is when I choose to enter and operate in a foreign market. So usually um, businesses, when they are internationalizing, they have to pick the timing of, the, uh, of entering that foreign market in a very tactical way. So I shouldn't enter a market when there is instabilities uh, in terms of economic instability or, econo uh, or political instability. I have to be very careful with the timing of entry because this could um, impact my ability to succeed in a market. So I can have a perfect type of product or a perfect service, but I could still not be successful in this market because of the timing I chose to enter a market where people were economically um, unstable and could not uh, afford or they could not uh, accept my products because of the economic situation. Or for example, because the polit there's political instabilities and laws and regulations are being impacted and cha are changing and therefore uh, I chose to enter in such time where there was a transition in um, the political system of a certain country and this also caused uh, uh, did not give me a good chance in succeeding in this market. So therefore, entering uh, a, a market and deciding the timing of entry is very strategic and it's very tactical and it highly impacts the uh, success of uh, businesses. Another component I have to consider is the competitive intensity. When entering a certain market, I have to evaluate my competition. I have to understand if I'm, for example, if I'm entering a market that is economically free, as we were discussing earlier, then this means that I will be dealing with high levels or uh, severe comp uh, competition. I will have local competitors, I will have international competitors to take into consideration. So therefore, I have to know that the country I am entering, how competitive uh, is the field in, or the industry? Uh, I will be uh, operating in, how many competitors do I have and who will be a major threat for uh, my business. So understanding your competition highly enhances your position in the market. And lastly, another element that could uh, pose as a commercial risk is the poor execution of strategy. Uh, on papers, I could have a very well put together plan and uh, it could look very uh, organized and well put together, but when executing or when implementing, I might start face, uh, facing uh, certain difficulties. And therefore, it's very important to execute your plan or your strategy in uh, a smart uh, way and to take into consideration the ongoing or the ever-changing environments surrounding us, whether they are internal or external, we have to take these into consideration. So I wouldn't, uh, so when executing my strategies and the plans I have put, uh, I do this in a very effective uh, manner and avoid any risks arising because I couldn't execute my strategy or plan um, in, a, in a good way. Okay, so now that we have covered the commercial risk, let's talk about strategic planning or how to uh, manage the strategies in order to internationalize. First off, when we are talking about a strategy, what exactly is a strategy? A strategy is a planned uh, set of actions that usually managers take to make best use of the firm's resources and core competencies to gain a competitive advantage. As we know, any business has its main resources, mainly 
the financial resources, the human resources, the uh, assets, and the information resources. Now, usually, any strategic planning undertakes these resources and how we can optimize these resources in an efficient and effective manner and this is the core concept of any type of management since we are talking about international business management so usually it's how to manage these resources on an international level and optimize the use of these resources to for maximum efficiency and effectiveness so therefore, when developing strategies, usually managers examine the firm's strengths and weaknesses and their opportunities and, uh, and challenges, or as we know them, for threats facing the firms. In other words, in order to um, succeed in the market, I have to gather information, as we have been saying since lecture one. One of the managerial tools uh, highly used to evaluate or to uh, collect information about the surrounding environments, whether they are internal or external, is the SWOT analysis. And I think uh, you probably have covered uh, or have taken the SWOT analysis in multiple courses. It is a high, highly used a managerial technique that is used to evaluate and gather and collect information about the internal and external environment which could uh, impact your ability to manage your business and it's very important and it's very tactical for businesses when they are entering foreign markets to use the SWOT analysis as a main tool to gather and collect information that could impact their um, ability or their operations uh, and their ability to uh, penetrate the foreign market. Therefore, when, when we're strategically thinking or when strategically implementing internationalization, uh, we have to decide which customers to target, what product lines to offer, how best to conduct with com or how to deal with compet uh, competition or competitors and how to generally configure and coordinate the firm's activities around the world and therefore in order to do this we need to have an international strategy so we have gathered information now what will we do so international strategies are usually strategies carried out in two or more countries why did we say two or more because markets differ so one of the components of internationalization is your ability to adapt to the changes from country to country. So therefore, we cannot have a fixed strategy uh, or a standardized strategy. You will usually find that part of internationalization is adapting your local strategy to uh, uh, comply with the foreign market that you are trying to enter. So therefore, managers develop international strategies too allocate scarce or limited resources and configure value adding activities on a worldwide scale to uh, uh, participate in major markets to implement valuable partnerships abroad and to engage in competitive moves in response to foreign competitors or foreign rivals what are the global or sustainable competitive advantage all firms work to uh, enhance or to uh, reach a competitive advantage. Any business, whether they are local or they are international or they are global, they are striving to uh, have a competitive advantage because having a competitive advantage, this is what differentiates one firm from another. This is what co customers look for when they are um, trying to purchase a product or a service. They are usually looking for what is this business or what is this organization uh, going to provide me that's different than others? What differentiates them from other firms? And this is also known as the competitive advantage. So therefore, managers always should aim to develop at one and the same time global scale in efficiency. Uh, multinational flexibility and their ability to develop innovations and leverage knowledge on a worldwide basis. If I do this, this will lead me to uh, or bring me a step closer to having a competitive advantage in the uh, international market. So therefore, firms that aspire to become uh, globally competitive, they should strive to um, follow or implement the three strategic objectives, such as 
ha being efficient or efficiency, flexibility, and learning. In other words, if I want to be uh, competitive in a foreign market and I want to succeed in a foreign market, I have to uh, strive to be efficient. I have to uh, ensure that I am making the right choices and I am implementing these choices in a, in a correct manner. I have to be flexible, as I stated in the beginning. I have to have the ability to adapt to the changes or the differences in markets. And I have to be open to learn um, that there is different uh, components or that markets differ, countries differ. We have different backgrounds and this is the purpose of understanding the different environments because there is no universal uh, uh, or there is no fixed way to manage a certain business we have to adapt according to the market we are trying to operate in so therefore as we were saying efficiency where i'm trying to lower the cost of the firm's operations and activities on a global scale i am trying to be flexible i have i need to have the agility to manage uh, diverse country specific risks and um opportunities and be an upper take or make use of the opportunities uh, that I could have by tapping resources in individual countries and exploiting local opportunities and I have to learn and develop the firm's products technologies and capabilities and skilled by um, uh, in uh, internationalizing knowledge gained from international ventures if you remember from uh, uh, previous lectures we said that the more international uh, firms become or the, the more countries uh, firms um, operate in, this increases their leverage. They, in other words, it increases their knowledge and it enhances their position on an international scale because I've learned to deal and adapt with so many different countries and this makes me stronger and more um, knowledgeable and more experienced when it comes to entering foreign markets. Therefore, often uh, su even successful firms excel at any one or two of these objectives. Uh, these, if I am able to apply or a bid to these strategic objectives, this will definitely enhance my position in the market and it will make me more successful uh, and stronger in the international market. Now, as we were discussing earlier, how can I enter these markets? So we analyzed or we understood that we have to analyze the different environments in, in, when thinking of internationalizing. After we analyze these environments, they could definitely um, make an impact on how we, uh, or make an impact on which entry strategy we want to use when entering a foreign market. What are the different entry strategies or what are the different ways that we can enter a foreign market through? We have the importing or global sourcing, we have exporting, we have counter trade, we have foreign direct investment, also known as FDI, we have licensing, franchising, and a partnership, or also known as collaborative ventures. What are these exactly? These are the different methods that uh, firms could use when trying to enter a foreign market or when they are trying to internationalize. Obviously, these entry strategies are chosen based upon the information or the data I collected. So in other words, the entry strategy could change according to the economic environment or the political environment or the fi financial in, uh, environment. So I have to take these uh, in, uh, components or these environments or the data I collected regarding these environments into consideration when choosing the appropriate entry strategy. I think uh, most of these strategies are hard, you, uh, you should be highly aware of, such as importing and exporting. Importing is the procurement of products and services from foreign sources, while exporting is the other way around, where you, as a foreign uh, or as a local country, you are producing certain products and then you are sending it out to a foreign country, and this is a way to enter foreign countries through exporting. We can do something called counter trade, where it's 
the exchange of products so here we are not using financial transactions we are trading one product uh, in exchange for another product we have the foreign direct investment which is um, actually uh, investing or establishing a presence in the foreign market by investing capital directly investing capital and securing ownership of a factory or a subsidiary a branch or other facilities in a new uh, and foreign market and usually foreign direct investments inquire huge amount of capital because you are going and, and directly investing in this foreign country another foreign uh, market entry strategy is through collaborative ventures also known as partnership where you can um, uh, joint ventures or you can collaborate and partnership with a, uh, a brand or a company in that foreign market that you are trying to enter so the firm makes similar equity investments abroad but in a partnership manner with another company and this definitely has its advantages and disadvantages one advantage is it makes operations a lot easier and it reduces um, uh, technical and operational issues because you are dealing with an insider or a company that knows that foreign market very well so you avoid falling into certain risks because uh, of lack of experience and so on and we have licensing and another form of licensing is uh, or one form of licensing is actually franchising now licensing is entering a foreign market through uh, where it's where a firm allows a foreign partner to use their intellectual property and this is usually done in exchange or in return for uh, royalties or other compensation depending on the agreement which they agree upon and franchising which we uh, highly are familiar with because this is mainly what is used in the um, food industry mainly where it is uh, in retailing and food such as mcdonald's dunkin donuts uh, and other uh, examples where um, they are also given uh, a license to operate with the and they they use the whole um, Glo the, the brand including the logo the slogan the uh, the know-how and everything but they operate in foreign markets as we witnessed by mcdonald's or dunkin donut which has recently entered the egyptian market and we have seen that usually uh, even the branches are very similar to one another you can enter uh, dunkin donuts uh, in in egypt you will find that it looks very similar to the uh, dunkin donuts that is uh, in the u.s and so on and these these are sources of franchising so what are the factors to consider when choosing a foreign market uh, and you will see that most of these factors are related to the different environments which we have covered throughout the course the factors are the goals and the objectives that you want to reach so the firm uh, what do they want what are their actual strategic goals and objectives such as how what is the profitability goal that they want to reach uh, the market share that they want to cover the competitive position that they are striving for or hoping for in that industry the degree of control uh, the desire regarding the decisions operations and assets involved in a venture so obviously if I am uh, using exporting as an entry strategy I will find that I have uh, zero control uh, over uh, my operations I just have to admit to the laws and regulations that are uh, prohibited and the uh, for, for example uh, foreign direct investments I have more control over my operations uh, but it is highly costly to, to use such entry strategy another factor that I have to consider when choosing the appropriate entry strategy is the firm's financial organizational and technological resources and capabilities what can I afford so if I have limited uh, uh, financial resources for example or my capital is very limited then obviously I will not uh, choose foreign direct investment as an entry strategy because as we said earlier this requires major uh, uh, financial capabilities in order to directly go and invest in a foreign market 
Also, I have to take into consideration the risks that I could inherit in each proposed uh, foreign venture. I have to understand and evaluate the conditions in the target country as we uh, covered, such as the legal, the cultural, and the economic and commercial circumstances, as well as the, the distribution and transportation systems, which are considered as uh, the operational uh, components under the commercial risk as we have covered earlier. So what are the other factors I have to consider is also the nature and extent of competition, as we stated earlier, the availability and capabilities of partners in that market, the suppliers, the distributors, the retailers, uh, also the value adding activities which the firm is willing to perform uh, in that market to delegate to local uh, partners in order to not lose their uh, partnership or their um, strategic partners. The long-term strategic importance of that market, what can this foreign market provide me with strategically speaking, uh, which will um, make me want to take the risk into entering that foreign market and make all that effort to enter such a market and the characteristics of the product or services that I will pre be providing the market with because this could be a component that could highly impact uh, my ability to choose the markets I want to enter. I have to ensure that the products or services are accepted by the citizens in these nations or they are uh, highly demanded by the people of these country or the countries I want to enter. So now that we understand uh, how we can enter foreign markets and how, what are the factors we need to consider, why is it so important for firms to participate in international business? And this will conclude what we have been covering throughout this course. It's very important for businesses to internationalize and I think we are, as consumers even, we are familiar with uh, the uh, internationalization or the global phenomena which we are dealing with now. So why are businesses uh, not okay with just being local or domestics? Why are they always trying to uh, enhance their, um, their operations and they are always trying to increase their market share and enter foreign markets? And one obvious reason is that uh, engaging or participating in international business definitely is an opportunity uh, for growth. Uh, any business wants to grow in the market, they want to increase their market share, they want to, uh, because when they do this, they will first, they will gain more customer base and they will have a stronger position in the market. The more countries I'm operating in, the more my brand will become known and therefore the more leverage I will have as we stated earlier. Also, uh, another obvious reason is that I want to enhance or increase my profits and my returns. If I'm, um, if I'm gaining more customers on an international scale, scale, this will definitely increase my returns as well. Also, engaging in internationalization helps businesses to gain new ideas and products and services and even business methods and this enhances their skills their knowledge their expertise in such industries and makes them stronger in that industry because uh, they will gain uh, new know-how and new information and new uh, 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 tactics in order to uh, make their position stronger in the market. Also, firms internationalize to uh, serve their key customers who have reallocated. <clears throat> I think we can all say that we have people who are we all know people who ha are living abroad and they have uh, migrated to different uh, countries and are just living there and uh, completely reallocated in these foreign countries, maybe for uh, work purposes, for study purposes, just for living purposes. But this has definitely is a phenomena that we see um, tremendously increasing nowadays and therefore some firms internationalize in order to reach these customers who have reallocated, who are still striving or who are still um, demanding their products. 
also to be closer to the supply sources. Some businesses or some organizations internationalize to uh, uh, take the benefits of outsourcing. So using uh, or taking advantage of cheaper uh, material in another country, cheaper factors of production and so on. Also, as I was just saying, to gain access to lower costs or better value factors of production. Uh, and I think we have seen this with many factories, uh, brands such as Nike, such as American Eagle, such as um, uh, Zara. We have so many brands that uh, reallocated their factories in, uh, in foreign countries in order to take advantage of lower costs of production and economies of scale and so on to overall um, reduce the their expenses and at the same time improve their quality of their products also firms internationalize to confront international competitors and as we said competition is not always a threat or it's not always a negative component that i should fear because competition actually um, promotes that promotes businesses to continuously enhance and improve their operations in order to be competitive and stronger uh, and to survive in the competitive market and uh, to lastly to invest in a potentially rewarding relationship with a foreign partner so i could internationalize in order to um, uh, partner uh, or have a partnership with a strong partner that could enhance my position in the market and could enhance my um, operations and make me stronger and more competitive in the market so therefore we conclude can we can conclude by saying that businesses in order for them to internationalize they have to collect information they have to study the foreign country uh, environments that they are trying to enter and uh, this has a huge return or a huge advantage for businesses and this is why that it's very important to study and analyze and understand the ways or the methods uh, for businesses to internationalize and enter foreign markets and I think that as we said earlier uh, no business is just okay with being domestic anymore every local business is on the uh, hunt for internationalization and are always trying to expand and enter foreign markets to gain advantages and take you uh, or make use of the opportunities that could be available in foreign countries Thank you and I hope you enjoyed the International Business Management course and I hope that you are now ready to uh, internationalize your business and uh, this, is, could, this could be used as a guide for entrepreneurs to enhance and improve their positions in the market and thank you for listening. <laughs>